in this tutorial, you and I are going to take this raw file and turn it into this final image in five simple steps using Lightroom Classic and Photoshop. Let's get into it. My name is Pi. I've been fortunate to create multiple successful companies in the photography space. I'm a photographer, but even more so, I would say I'm an educator and frameworks person. My specialty, making complex subjects easy for you to master, right here on Adorama TV. Hello, my friends. My name is Pi. Welcome to Adorama TV. Okay, recently we did another tutorial about this shoot of how we lit and shot it. And a lot of you asked in the comments, can we do a tutorial showing how to edit the image? Yes, absolutely. I actually read and like to create content around your guys' comments. So please comment. Let me know what you guys want to learn next on any of my videos, and I'll do my best to create content around it. Now we're here inside of Lightroom Classic, and we're looking at this shot of Sabrina, and you might think that we have a really long way to go to get from here to this final image that is going to take us a long time. But in reality, it's not. And we're going to break this down into five simple steps. Step one, I want you to start with just dialing in basic color grade. Okay, so dial in your look inside of Lightroom Classic. Now this looks a long ways off primarily because I was lazy and I didn't dial in my white balance. You know you do it too. Sometimes you just, you know, don't feel like it. I don't know. Press W to bring up the white balance selector. I'm just gonna select right off the wall because I know the wall is a neutral white. And what I'm gonna do is also bring up the exposure a bit. So let's go up plus one. And immediately you'll notice that it actually looks pretty close now to the overall color tone of this final image. So from here, just dial in your look, whatever it is that you wanna have. You could use your sliders to adjust HSL, to adjust clarity, whatever you'd like. You can use a preset of your own. I'm gonna use Visual Flow's Pure Pack and I'm gonna choose the hard light preset because it adapts the preset to the lighting condition, which in this case, we're using hard lighting on our subject, right? And Pure kind of has an overall editorial look and feel to it. So I want this to look more neutral. I want it to have a little bit of a matte finish. So you'll notice that Pure kind of cuts off the, the top end of the highlights and the bottom end of the shadows just a little bit to kind of create that feel. But here there's really no right or wrong. Well, I mean, there can be a wrong answer. You know, some color grades don't look great, but I want you to take it in whatever direction that you guys would like. One thing that I want to note is I'm going to make some fine tuning adjustments. I'm going to raise the exposure a little. I'm also going to reduce the temperature and bring my tint up a little bit more. Okay. I kind of want it to have a little bit more of a, a neutral kind of feel to it just for this particular image. I'm also going to bring the clarity up. What this does is it kind of stretches out. It exaggerates mid-tone contrast. So where there's areas of highlight and shadow, it really does a great job of kind of pulling those areas out and making it a little more exaggerated on an image like this. The one thing I want to make note of, and if we zoom in, by the way, you'll notice that there's grain on the image, but from the preview, it actually shows a lot of grain. There's sort of a Lightroom classic. I don't know if it's a bug or if it's just the way they designed it, but Currently, the preview shows more grain than is actually in the image. So if you find that you're using grain on a preset, you notice that, man, it looks like there's a ton of grain. Actually zoom into the image, let it render, then zoom back out, and that's the amount of grain that the image actually has. But here's the thing. What we're going to do inside of Photoshop, we're actually going to do a lot of manipulating in the background. And when you have grain that's added to the image, it can create sort of artifacts uh, and weird transitions. So I'm actually going to turn the grain off for now. And then when we come back to Lightroom, we can always add it back in from there. Okay. So turn it off for now. Once we have this done, we're ready to take it into Photoshop. Go ahead and press control E or command E to open the image with its adjustments inside of Photoshop. Okay. Step two, we're into Photoshop. I actually want to start with the background first. I want to actually remove the background and get it right because well, I like to start with the largest adjustments first and kind of work my way through. And right now, the pipes and the whole scene is very distracting to me. This seems like a big job. Honestly, it's not. Press Control J or Command J just to jump the background to a new layer. Press L to bring up your lasso tool. And if you need to, you can press Shift L to cycle through till you get to the, just the plain lasso tool or click in the menu to get to lasso. What we're going to do is select a large chunk of the ceiling that we want removed. And I'm just using my mouse for all of this. Honestly, most of the stuff that we're doing in Photoshop is pretty simple. Unless you're doing advanced retouch, you can do most everything with just your mouse. From here, press Shift Backspace. And what we're going to do is bring up the fill, uh, the fill dialog. And we're going to choose Content Aware Fill. And I want you to turn Color Adaptation on. Because we want the colors to kind of smoothly adjust throughout this, this background, we want to keep that on and it kind of keeps the focus on that as Photoshop does its magic and literally just removes the pipes for me. 
So I know this as we're going through the shoot, right? I'm going to go ahead and select this right side. You might think like, why is Pi leaving so much of that in while he was shooting? Because I know that while I'm shooting, it's just a matter of as long as I leave space between my subject and this background, all I need to do is go into Photoshop, select content aware fill, and it's going to remove virtually everything. Now this often happens with content aware fill and you might think like, oh man, it's not working well. No, it really did a good job. It removed most of what we wanted, right? So what we're gonna do is actually just keep sort of massaging the background until we get to where we want. So I'll adjust between content aware fill and just the patch tool. Patch to is shift J or J to get to the patch tool and shift J to toggle right to the, the regular patch tool. So I'll select an area like this and I'll drag and drop it over here. And I'll select an area like this and drag and drop over here. And I can do it multiple times. So if I wanna brighten this whole area, I'm gonna do it again. Drag and drop, and do this again. Okay, go right to here. And I'm gonna keep adjusting until basically most of these areas are just removed. Again, all that was necessary was that there was space between my subject and my background. And look, most of it is already taken care of, right? It's kind of crazy how easy this is because it completely transforms the way that you're gonna shoot. Now, other areas, you might notice that there's some small areas like this where there's weird transitions, right? If we kind of look and zoom in, and sometimes it helps if you wanna, if you expect to print something, sometimes I'll throw a, a, a curves layer over it and I'll just do wonky things to it, like kind of just create a weird curve that really exaggerates the uh, the overall tonality of the image so you can see where are the areas that there's still odd transitions, right? Then I'll turn that off, go to that layer, and I'm just gonna select this area and do the same content aware fill with color adaptation turned on, okay? And it's gonna smooth those for me. I'll do the same thing here and let it kind of continue to smooth the image in those areas where it looks like there's there's a bit of rough stuff like right here i can see a little bit if you're not you know prepping the image for print um and it's not gonna be blown up i wouldn't go through the extra detail of adding that little curves layer and kind of working from that standpoint but if you are then it's a good idea usually what i'll do is just do it visually and uh and this looks about right for me okay from this place, you can do a lot of fun things too. So watch this. If I want to adjust my crop, I sometimes like to create a lot of negative space in a shot. So what I'll do is I'll adjust my crop and I'm going to pull the crop up and out and I'm going to leave it right there. And what I'm going to do is say content aware again. So click that and then press OK. Now it's going to stretch my backdrop and actually just make like the image like recomposed, right? So check this out. There we go. Okay. If we don't like part of the transition, if I'm like, man, I want this whole top area to be brighter, I'm just gonna grab the top area and pull it down, okay? I love it, looks really cool right now. The next thing I wanna do is step three, I would say it's worth kind of doing any retouching that you wanna do at this place, right? If you want, you can jump everything to a new layer so you can separate that out. But all I'm gonna do is kind of zoom in and again, this time I'm gonna shift to um, a, a different tool. So let's go ahead and go to like a spot healing tool um, or even a healing brush. Spot healing is gonna work fine. I'm gonna use my bracket to make it a little bit larger. And I'm just gonna start dragging over these areas of the backdrop that are noticeable. There are other ways of doing this too, by the way. You could actually apply like a blur to the entire background. So let me just show you real quick. You can select the entire image. And what you would do is basically go up to a blur. You do like a Gaussian blur um, and you just apply like uh, whatever radius. So like say 15 radius. And you can go in and just mask it. So if we were to say, um, let's go ahead and hold down alter option and click this so none of it appears, right? What I'm gonna do is with a uh, white brush, I can actually just paint in and smooth the entire background wherever I want it. So this is a very quick and kind of dirty way of getting to a good result. And I'm usually very careful to like not, you don't wanna smooth your shadows because it'll look like your subject is standing over something that that isn't, you know, like over just nothing. So what I'll do is just kind of smooth. And if there's every areas that like, I wanna get in a little closer, like for example, this isn't really smoothing out completely, right? I'm just gonna grab that and remove it. So Alt Control Shift E to jump everything to a new layer and then go ahead and remove that little one. So it does a nice job of kind of smoothing. You can also use like, you know, Retouch for me has their, their panel that does this kind of stuff. All that's fine, but do your retouching at this point. And then step four, I would say, is like any liquefying that you wanna do. Like a lot of times we're actually gonna liquefy and make adjustments to the cloth itself. 
So notice that like anybody that shoots with fabric is gonna do this for every single uh, image that they create, right? They're gonna get it close. They're gonna get the motion to the place that they want it to be. But then to really get the cloth to look and feel how they want, they're gonna go and exaggerate. And they're gonna manipulate. They're gonna look to kind of create soft bends in the cloth and kind of nice curvature and, and eliminate all the wrinkles that feel like they're a little bit too, um, a little bit too edgy, a little bit too sharp, right? So we're just going to kind of exaggerate and create this nice, unique shape out of the out of the cloth. And side note, we're doing this once the background is fully fixed because it's very convincing at this point, the adjustments that we're making, right? So we would go through and do any of the liquefaction that we want to do. And when you're done with that, I like to do one final adjustment inside of Photoshop. This is a quick and dirty thing that I like to do. Again, a lot of the things I do inside of Photoshop are they're they're fast, they're easy, and they're meant for like maximum output. They're not they're not detailed retouching type stuff. Um, it's kind of like let's get ninety percent of the way with ten percent of the effort, and then if I need to advance retouch, I honestly just hand it off to our retouchers. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to bring a curve into this. So I'm going to bring a curve that just pumps up all of the exposure. But what we're going to do is this is the final layer that we have below, right? I'm going to press Alt Control G or Option Command G. And what this is going to do is pin it to that layer below. And this would only matter if you wanted to only apply to one specific layer, right? But we're only seeing the layer below. I just want you guys to have like kind of good, you know, understanding and principles when you're using Photoshop. So what we're going to do here is right click and we're going to go to the blend options. Okay. So blending options and with blending options selected, I'm going to go to the underlying layer and I'm going to say, I only want you to blend this adjustment in if the underlying layer is a highlight. Now notice that we get this really weird posterization effect, right? It's because we have to detach the feathering. So hold down alt or option and then click. And now what it's doing is actually feathering the effect throughout the image. So I'm going to click and drag this all the way to the top where basically the only way it's going to adjust or apply this brightening effect is if the underlying area is a highlight. Now, where are the highlights in the image? Well, we know that the background is one giant highlight, but we also know that there's highlights all across the body, the fabric, everything, right? So what this does, if I turn it on and off, is it's basically like a quick dodge. It's doing a quick dodge against all the highlights in the image. And you're like, well, Pi, that's too powerful. And I go, yeah, I know. But the beauty of this is as its own layer, you just simply adjust back the opacity. So I can go to an opacity that I like, like let's say 50%. And that's why I'll make the adjustment big up here because I know that, you know, I'm going to reduce the opacity of this in just a moment. And that's it, guys. Like we have taken, I want you guys to look at this. In five simple steps, you guys have gone from, well, this was the original raw file to this. That's pretty crazy, right? So next time you're shooting, this is what I mean about thinking about what you're going to do to the image in post. Anytime I capture an image, I'm always thinking about what I'm going to do in post because I want to make my life easy in doing that. If I'm shooting in a studio space and I just don't have enough room to get the whole scene whited out with the composition that I want, what I'm going to do is create space between my subject and allow room so that way when I go into post, it makes stuff like this incredibly simple. Hope you all enjoyed. Again, as always, please comment on the video. Let me know what you guys think. I read every single comment. I do my best to reply. And I most certainly develop tutorials off of the ideas that you guys have, just as you've seen here. In the meantime, if you guys want A to Z education that's just like this, check out SR Lounge Premium. Inside, we have complete workshops from A to Z on everything running a photography business, from just learning the camera all the way through to creating a seven-figure studio all of it is inside of SR Lounge Premium. In the meantime, I'm going to see you guys back here on Ad Arma TV next week. So as always, please subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications if you want notifications of all the awesome videos going up each day. And I'll see you guys in one week, same time, same place. Peace.